Good evening, everybody. My name is John Mulhern, and I'm the principal of the Chagas College here in the National Botanic Gardens of Horticulture. Um, this evening's programme is about showcasing what we do in horticulture and the courses that you can do. Um, we're going to have live panel discussion, so we would welcome your questions on the courses that we do, either full-time or part-time, and we will also showcase the different enterprises that we have, both here in Glasnevin and in our site in Chagask in Ashtown. So we welcome your engagement uh, on our programme this evening. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Chagas College of Amenity Horticulture here in the National Botanic Gardens. Um, you're very welcome to this evening's program. Um, what we hope to have here this evening is uh, some Q&A on what we do in horticulture, our courses, um, and I want to introduce you to some of our staff this evening um, who are here to talk about um, the Chagas College of Amenity Horticulture in the National Botanic Gardens. Uh, I have Chris Heavey, I have Deirdre Walsh and I have Paddy Smith who are here to talk about what we do here in the Chagas College in the National Botanic Gardens. Um, essentially, we run horticulture courses. Chagas does this in the National Botanic Gardens and in Kildalton and we've been doing this for quite a long time in the National Botanic Gardens. Very proud to be associated with the uh, product that is the National Botanic Gardens uh, run uh, so superbly by the OPW. Um, just to pass over to Chris Heavey first, uh, maybe Chris, you could tell us what function you have here in the college. Well, I started off as a propagator and did a degree in landscape architecture. So anything related to that end of uh, horticulture, I involved myself with. But the main uh, products that I would involve myself here would be the uh, plant propagation at level five yeah. and uh, nursery stock production and gardens and parks at level six. So things that are generally related to my field. Yeah, uh, at level five, level six and level seven, that's the foundation course, the advanced cert course and the degree course. Exactly. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Uh, Deirdre Walsh. Uh, um, and I've been teaching in the botanics for the last number of years now. Prior to that, I have been working in the horticultural industry for the last 20 odd years, uh, mainly in the, in the realm of landscape architecture. Very good. Thank you, Deirdre. And finally, Paddy. Hi. Um, I've been teaching for the last 10 years here in the Botanic Gardens. Um, I uh, specialise in horticultural mechanisation in relation to sports turf landscaping and in relation to fruit and veg. Um, I also deliver landscape construction and sports turf science and maintenance. Thanks, Paddy. So essentially, we have a, a, a very strong presence here in the National Botanic Gardens. Each year, we would uh, teach maybe in the region of 220, 230 students on a range of full-time, part-time, and component awards. So we're going to be talking about the, that this evening. Um, we welcome your questions and you can send your questions on to us through the Q&A tab that's at the bottom of your screen and we welcome those. So we would like to go through those questions throughout this evening's program. Um, what we will do now is we will uh, show you a short video of our different enterprises. So the first video that we want to show you, which was shot earlier, uh, is in relation to our tree and nursery enterprise, which is based over in Ashtown and our colleague Chris Evey is going to introduce that video to you now. My name is Christopher Heavey, a lecturer here at the Botanic Gardens with a specific focus on propagation and tree management. Uh, this is our nursery and it currently comprises uh, glasshouse compartments. We have two glasshouse compartments and they're dedicated to propagation and liners and growing on of liners. Uh, we have a further compartment then for the growing on of both perennials and shrubs. The most recent addition to our facilities is the field nursery out here beside us where we have planted a selection of deciduous tree species and this allows us to maintain a great age heritage of trees from saplings right through to semi-mature trees. Uh, this area then gives a wonderful opportunity for students to be able to work on real life training uh, which is very relevant to the industry. So here at Chagas Gashtown, we are currently adding a number of capillary beds to the nursery to give us some automation in terms of watering for our plants. Uh, these facilities will be uh, focused on the irrigation of plants and uh, based beside the glass house here. Um, they're essential for our students in giving the capability of hands-on training um, in the practical elements of uh, nursery work and tree management. 
Plants can be propagated and grown on in the glasshouse area here, giving students excellent practice in plant propagation and plant husbandry skills. Um, the field nursery that we have beside us here allows for learning in the pruning and training of commercial crops of trees um, from the er very early stages of production right up to uh, the final stages of production, making it possible for students uh, to work with not just a range of tree types, but also a range of saleable ages. All of these facilities based here at uh, Chagas Gashtown and Chagas Botanic Gardens give a fantastic opportunity for students to be able to gain hands-on experience that makes them so much more employable in an industry, an industry that at the moment is extremely viable and has wonderful job opportunities into the future. So what you saw there in that video was a representation of our footprint in Chagas Gashtown. We operate a research station in Chagas Gashtown, which is just six kilometers from us here in the National Botanic Gardens, and our students spend a lot of time there on practical work experience. It's a fantastic footprint, and, uh, uh, and I think Chris showed us some, some fantastic uh, details on it. Just ask Chris maybe on that. Um, did, 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 you, there's an outdoor part and there's an indoor part, a new glass house that was constructed. Um, what, what, what elements do we, do we teach in, the, in, in terms of the glass house area there, Chris, versus the outdoor area? Well, the glass house area is used for primarily for propagation. Now, propagation works into two main areas in terms of the courses. So plant propagation would be one aspect of it, but the main one that would be used over in Ashtown would be fruit and veg production. Yeah. So, which has become very popular. It has, and then we have, of course, the fruit and veg area there, which we'll talk we about do. later on, yeah. and it all feeds into that. So, does, yeah. um, but the other thing too is we have nursery stock production at level six, and nursery stock production, the training in that, it's essential to have facilities that are practical and that we're able to replicate some element of what happens in the nursery industry. And the outdoor nursery does that very well. It both, indoor yeah. and outdoor parts yeah. of it uh, work, work together to yeah. fulfill that, that role, yeah. Yeah, we have a very strong footprint there in terms of the indoor and the outdoor. Uh, and as you say, the fruit and veg complements that as well. So yes. and then we're building up a range of plants there all yeah. of the time too, so the propagation can be easily done over a range, a wide range. And of course, that gives the student then a much better palate to be able to work yeah. with. Yeah, within the glasshouse as well, we've access to some modern technologies in terms of, we'll say, mist units, warm benches. Yeah, Did yeah we have, get we exposed to that. Yeah, we have a mist, mist unit, we have warm bench and plastic systems over there for propagating plants. Yeah. And then we also have LED lighting and yeah. so on too. So we can, we can introduce students on a small scale, but we can introduce students to all of these relatively modern technologies and work with them. Yeah, to, and to a, lot of, a lot of the students would see that also here in the National Botanic Gardens. They'd see that as part of their placement uh, and they'd work hand in glove with the, with the gardeners here on the OPW and they do the same in Ashtown. Yeah, they'll work with the, the staff over there who are, are excellent at what they do. Yeah. You know, and there's, there's so much, um, so many years, I suppose, of knowledge yeah. built in there from various staff in the research end. And that's the great thing about the connection between research and uh, the, the education end of it, yeah. that we have that interconnection and we're able to make use of that knowledge that's been built up over years by other, other people in the research field. So you've mentioned plant, plant propagation and that's a forte of your own and, and, and it's, a, it's a very strong suit. And recently there's been a lot of people that have come on that program just to do that module. So they, they pop in to do just plant propagation, isn't that right? Yeah, we have component. Half of the plant propagation course that we teach here in the Botanic Gardens is component. And by component, I mean they come in for that course and that course alone, possibly. Or maybe they might do another component with that. Um, and that's, that's a great, it's a great connection for the students that are here permanently and those people who are coming in with a great interest in it because there's a, there's a great pull and shove in terms of information and, and you know, knowledge. Yeah, they're sharing knowledge. And some yeah. of those people are actually working in the industry. And some of them yeah. have, uh, have worked in it yeah. and gone into different careers mm -hmm. and then come back to it. And some of yeah. them are working in the industry yeah. as it is. And some of them are working in parks and gardens and so on. And they want that extra. They're building bit their knowledge. Bit of knowledge, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They're building yeah. their knowledge. And of course, they can build up a component. They can build up yeah. component awards towards a uh, major award. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Over Nowadays, time. we talk about, uh, we'll <coughs> say credits. And there's so many credits allocated to each module and there's 15 credits allocated at level five. So a student signs on to do that and they get the experience of doing that, but they can add on further modules. Exactly. Like yeah. what Deirdre might talk about in terms of landscape design or what Paddy might talk about in terms of turf grass. Yeah. So all of those can be combined into well, you a can major see it, You can see it with our students. You can see it yeah. where they're, they're building. You know, they might be able to do two or three this year. They might only be able to do one next year, but over two or three or four years, they're able to build up an entire uh, portfolio. 
Indeed. I just take a question that's coming in on the Q&A, and I welcome these questions coming in from our live audience. Um, uh, it's the impact of the coronavirus that it might have on lectures and practical work in the coming year. So again, Chris, I'll just target this to you, because this summer you're heading up a, an online uh, course on plant yeah, propagation. On the 16th of June, which is in less than two weeks' time, week, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll be uh, running our uh, first uh, online plant propagation yeah. course. And, uh, over about 12 or 13 days? Uh, it's over about 13 days, yeah. about five weeks, yeah. over 13 days, over five weeks. Yeah. And, and that will encompass live lectures. Yeah. So in, very similar to this classroom that yeah. we're in at the moment here where we used to do our live lectures. So they, we'll do live lectures um, on Zoom. And then also we have a full program of practicals uh, videoed um, and broken into compartmentalized sort of yeah. So the student can engage with that program which is a full level five component award online yeah. uh, without coming in here to the classroom because that's the question that's been asked in relation yeah. to how it would fall. Well, they can engage yeah. in it live. Live, yeah. Or they can engage in it after hours after, yeah. and, and it'll be there for them to be able to engage with. Yes. Yeah. We use a platform called Moodle and we've been using that quite successfully for the last number of years and all of our staff are well tuned into using that. So Moodle has been adopted in the last number of weeks really that we had to uh, adopt to the use of Moodle. So we're broadening that out and, and you will be using that quite We are. And, and for those of us who haven't used this sort of technology before, it's, uh, it's an eye opener and it's, it's enjoyable. It's enjoyable. And I want to see how it works. I want to see how, how a student reacts to it. And you're not performing in, in a live setting necessarily, but it'll be interesting to see how it all works. I, I think it'll be positive. Very good. Yeah, I think it'll be very positive yeah. too and great for the college and great for us yeah. moving forward. Okay, at this point, we'll move on for the, for the audience that's watching at home uh, to our next video. And this video is uh, Profiles Deirdre Walsh and the landscape uh, design and the landscape enterprise that we have in the college between Glasnevin and the National Botanic Gardens and Ashtown. My name is Deirdre Walsh and I'm a college teacher based in the National Botanic Gardens in Glasnevin. I'm involved in the delivery of the landscape modules at level five, six and seven. We utilise the Chalkis Ashtown campus for the delivery of practical skills. Students gain hands-on experience with basic landscape skills such as paving, planting, construction and design. So at our Ashtown campus we have designated specific areas where our groups of students can learn their practical skills. Students play a key role in the development of permanent landscape features on campus such as the avenue planting, pedestrian paving areas and the installation of our Bloom Show Garden from 2017 that was recreated here by our landscape students. Other practicals include tree and shrub planting, marking and lining out, taking levels, paving, creating landscape elements such as water and timber features. So one of the main advantages of completing the landscape stream at level six here is that students are offered the opportunity to realise their designs right from conception through to the installation. We have an area designated for studios demo gardens. So this is a very rewarding learning process for our students as they learn the advantages and disadvantages of what it takes to realise a landscape design. In addition to enhancing their landscaping skills, they will also produce a coherent portfolio of various landscape designs, which they can showcase before they start any placement or employment when they leave us here in the college. Okay, uh, you've just seen a very nice video that we produced uh, in the last uh, year, uh, which showcases our landscape design uh, and our landscape uh, teaching. Deirdre, you, you have been uh, front and centre with that. Very nice pictures of the Bloom Garden there. Could you tell us a bit about how that was packaged, put together, and how we use that in our teaching for our different students? So in 2017, uh, Chagas and Pieta House put forward the Chagas Garden of Hope and we uh, showcased it at Bloom and we were delighted we won a gold medal, Best in Category and the People's Choice Award. So it was a huge commitment by colleagues here, uh, in everybody in this room, to deliver on that garden and then subsequently once Bloom was over, the garden needs a home. So it was decided at that point that the garden would be re relocated to uh, the Chagas Ashtown site and it's at front and centre at the outside the conference centre, um, out, right outside the front doors of our conference centre. So in order to deliver on that and to build that garden, we had all our student groups um, that are interested in landscaping. Uh, we had the um, uh, build and construction people, we had landscape designers, and we had the um, landscape design and maintenance from all streams involved in delivering that garden. So they all um, kind of fulfilled their learning outcomes yeah. while building the garden. It, it, it was able to allow different students from different levels 
to partake in the build. Yes. And there was a great team effort there. But that not alone happened in the Bloom Garden. We yeah. are also involved in building other gardens. We've built some here in the National Botanic Gardens, yeah. small showcase gardens. What, 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 how do students get in on that? Yeah, so if you're interested in, in landscaping industry, um, one of the huge advantages of studying in the Botanic Gardens is that students build show gardens. They so do. every yeah. year students build show gardens yeah. uh, in our Chagas Ashtown site. Uh, so this year we had a group of students and they built a terrific garden um, and it's really over in our, our student garden demo area. Yeah. So like that, they come in to the college here in uh, Class Nevin. Uh, they design their garden here in the studio and then they go over and they build it in Ashtown and it's a huge learning real life learning experience for them because they get to know what you know what it takes to build a garden what goes under the ground yeah. what goes over the ground and what you know uh, and teamwork teamwork and is a huge part of that as well so garden design and, and landscape construction go yeah. go hand in hand isn't yes. that right and, yes. and we'll, we'll talk to Paddy more about that shortly yeah. uh, so students get to use extra skills do they need any special skills coming in as garden some people often ask yeah. me you know do I need to be good at artwork do I need to be good yeah. at drawing yeah. what's, what's excellent question John yeah. uh, no they do yeah. not need to know any drawing skills. And one of the things I love doing with the students when they come in is the first day they come in, I get them to draw out their, their, you know, their dream garden on a sketch, a piece of trace paper. And then I, when they do present then after 12 weeks of a module, I, I pin their, their, their dream garden up beside yeah. Yeah. what they've actually completed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I've attended those sessions and yeah. those are fantastic sessions where mm. it gives great confidence to the learner to get up and present in front of their peers. Yeah. This is what I've created. And they've had no drawn skills No, no drawn skills at all. And, yeah. and one thing that they really gain out of that is they exceed all expectations because they come yeah. in here and they look in the walls and they see the previous work yeah. from previous students and they say, I could never do that. And yeah. they do it. And, and they, they end up doing it. Yeah. After a very short time. Quick question that's coming in on the Q&A from our audience. Um, can you tell me a bit more about the garden design course? Will it be practical hands-on or lectures? Now this summer, mm -hmm. similar to what Chris is doing on plant propagation, yeah. you with some colleagues are involved in an online garden design course. Could yeah. you just tell us about how that will work now? Okay, so just to answer the, the first question, yeah. Garden design at level five is mainly studio based, so there's studio, no practical yeah. work. Yeah. Uh, so, but you're in the you're in in the classroom situation uh, where you're you're you know in you're drawing the, you're drawing yeah, yeah you're drawing all yeah. day. And then so this summer we were due to run a garden design course, and so now we have we've implemented all of that online, similar to what Chris has suggested. So this is going out with uh, using the Zoom platform. So we have lectures live in the morning, um, and if you can attend them, fantastic. If not, yeah. they'll be up on our Moodle platform later on, and then in the so afternoon. So it's virtual as well. It's, it's virtual, like it's like yeah. this to be recorded. Yes. It'll be available on the web. Yeah. It'll be available on Moodle. It'll be available on Moodle. Yeah, yeah. once it's finished, and then the afternoon session. Then we do have one-to-one -one contact, virtual one-to-one -one contact. So if a student has any questions on, you know, how to use a scale yeah. ruler or yeah. what do I need. To, for yeah. this to complete this part of the drawing we'll do one-to-one -one, um tutorial sessions yeah. and then later on then we'll have a group discussion so, so they've access to your knowledge yes. and expertise yeah. in the same way that you would be presenting to a class you will be available online pretty much in, we've in tried to follow sense. the similar yeah. footprint and let it yeah. kind of happen organically because that's what would happen in a studio anyway we yeah. have lectures in the morning yeah. and then you know we're, the, the tutors are going around you know for the afternoon kind of dealing with students one-on-one -on -one contact and there will be assessments let's not forget that and the same in the plant yeah. propagation and the same in the landscape and in the turf grass yeah. there are assessments because all of our modules are qqi validated mm -hmm. and they have to be uh, assessed, internally yeah. verified and externally and, and verified. One thing about the assessments is uh, for the garden design module is you're presenting. Yeah. So you have to stand up and present your work that you completed. Yeah. And generally, that's a, that's a, it's a big day in the college for yeah. presentations of garden yeah. design. And it's, it's, it it's hugely beneficial for people to be able to stand up and talk about the work that they complete. And gives them great confidence. And, and not only that, but it's, it's setting them up for, for a career because Completely. there is a demand for this. We look at what's on TV every, mm -hmm. every May and June is show gardens. Yeah. It's bloom, you know. You know, we didn't have it this year, but we will have it back. And people are very interested in the outdoor space. Completely, yeah. And, and it's usually like, it's a visual thing. So if you're into yeah. design at all, you know, you're going to learn about design principles or we're going to be looking at precedent studies from designers around the world, you know. So you'll, you'll kind of get, it's great exposure to what is design, yeah. you know. And, and everyone can be creative. Completely. completely yeah. And there's, yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of opportunities out there, you know, yeah. going forward. And it's quite that. challenging as well, because like not everything that you're going to put down on paper is going to be accepted, you know, and it's going to be marked. So you have to 
be able to, you know, accept a bit of feedback and yeah. have you thought about this and have you thought about doing this other, so that you can, you know, maximize your potential in, in the studio. Just one other question that's coming in that's, that's related to this, but the plant ID, we do a lot on plant yeah. identification. Obviously, it's the National Botanic Gardens. Mm -hmm. There's many thousands and thousands of specimens here and they're all labeled. So part of our brief is to, is to, is to, is to teach plant knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that plant knowledge is transferred into many modules, not least of all plant propagation, but garden design. Yeah. And students learn by, through, the, through the act of the drawing because they have to put in different plants. They don't need any prior knowledge on that either. No, but what I would say, mm -hmm. if you are considering to go down the, the garden design route, um, to choose to complete garden design and plant ID and use is a great idea because you do have to complete planting plans. It's not, look, the, all the information is there. We have plenty of books in our library down in studio. But if you do have that knowledge where you're going out around the gardens here on plant walks, you can visualize the plants yeah. and you can then visualize what they're going to look like yeah. in your garden. You We're know? so lucky to have the 57 acres yeah. here around this building. I'm sure viewers can see the nice vista that we're looking out on here. We're looking out on the Tolka and we're looking out on the Rose Garden. We're up here in Glasnevin. It's just an idyllic spot mm -hmm. to, to teach and to learn horticulture because we're surrounded by plants. Um, so I just want to move on maybe to the next presentation. And that video, the next video presentation is going to be done by my colleague, uh, Paddy Smith. And Paddy Smith is, in this video is going to outline our turf grass enterprise, which is a very important part of, of amenity horticulture that we're involved in. And we have a very close alignment with the stakeholders in, in turf grass throughout, throughout the country. So um, uh, please enjoy this next video. My name is Paddy Smith. I'm a college teacher in the National Botanic Gardens. I'm involved in the delivery of a range of sports turf subjects across different programs aimed at both full-time and part-time students. In 2017, this new golf facility was constructed here in Ashton, consisting of three holes. Each green and tee box are built on a sand compost root zone with modern drainage and an automatic irrigation system to replicate what is present on modern sports turf facilities here in Ireland. In the building of the Turf Academy, grasses were selected to give the students as much exposure as possible Possible to sustainable approaches to turf grass management. The Turf Grass Academy is used as an essential part in the training and extension program across all courses that we teach at the college at certificate and degree level. Throughout the year, students have the opportunity to learn all of the skills that are associated with modern sports turf care. This includes the setup, operation, and care of a wide range of precision mowers. Root zone management is an integral part of sustainable turf care. In all our courses, students will be exposed to all modern methods of cultural operations, including top dressing, aeration, decompaction, nutrition, and overseeding. Students from our turf grass programs go to work in different sports turf locations at home and abroad. Many of our students go to work in the US, UK, and continental Europe, mainly in golf course facilities. In Ireland, there are many opportunities and openings in the management of golf courses, sports pitches, multi-sports facilities, and across the sports turf service sector. Okay, uh, that was a very nice video that was produced over on our turf grass enterprise, which is in, uh, over in Ashtown. The college has a long association with training in the whole area of uh, amenity turf grass um, from our days in Kinsley. So we're continuing on that tradition here by running our, our turf grass courses as part of our certificate, advanced cert and degree. So much so that we constructed um, a three hole golf facility in, in Ashton and that's what Paddy uh, was, was showcasing in that video. Again, Paddy, can I just ask you, you're heavily involved in that area. Um, could you tell us a bit about how we use that facility to train our students uh, in the college at level six and level seven in particular, the, the advanced certs and the degree students? Yeah, no problem. Um, uh, that, uh, that Turf Academy Training Academy was constructed in 2017 also. And this year alone, we had 13 students who were, who, who were working in the industry who came in through the advanced certificate in sports or science and maintenance. And them students were not just from a uh, golf course of background, we had one student who was from a UL. And they generally understand the day-to-day -day operations of mowing and cultural practices. So in relation to, we would like to deliver the science side, the science side in the classroom. And then kind of like a role reversal where our full-time students will be doing the degree program, they get to choose an elective in second or third year where they wouldn't be as strong practically 
where they would actually get the opportunity to uh, demonstrate and to hone in on them skills, which then would help them in industry then to achieve the job. Yeah, it was very interesting. This The last year group that came through, like 13 of them uh, were, were traveling up to our facility on a Monday and a Tuesday morning. So there was face-to-face that was allowed, of course, at the time. And uh, they were returning then to work yes. in their in their turf grass facility, be it a golf course or whatever. And you mentioned one person was, was coming up from UL, University of Limerick in Castle Troy. So they obviously, you know, they, they put great stead in it and they, they, they return to their jobs after, which is a great model, isn't well, it? Their employers understand the need for their, their employees to have a qualification. Mm. And, the, and the students themselves, employees, they, under, they um, understand the need to acquire a qualification as well. Mm. So yeah, there's great dedication from them to make them make the distances, but even going forward and the environment that we're in at the moment, I can even see the key in relation to delivering uh, virtual classrooms yeah. uh, is going to be key going forward. Uh, again, is if, if STEM staff members are required to demonstrate or to carry out certain tasks on a golf course, that they are still able to retrieve, uh, receive their qualification yeah. by um, looking at our courses online, whether it's in their own time in the evening or in, in the afternoon. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the ideal model, isn't it? I mean, it, it provides that platform for people to tune in. Yeah. I mean, we're replacing that day and a half of training with an online portal, if you like. But let's not forget, we will try and, 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 and meet our practical engagements by bringing in small, segregated, invited groups in that will be socially distanced. And we will, we will endeavor to oh, do yeah, that no, throughout all our programs. Yeah. And, we, and like in relation to we have the most up-to-date machinery, mm. we're able to... Tell us a bit about the machinery. There's a lot of machinery over yeah, there. Yeah, like we're able to, de- like in relation to cultural practices, in relation to, okay, if somebody's looking in here tonight might understand like a mower, a rotary mower, but we go into the science of relation to cylinder mowers and frequency of cut and how to get down to low cutting heights of 2.4, how to get the speed of a ball, how to uh, increase or slow down in relation to aeration, in relation to removing touch, in relation to moving... Uh, decompaction. So we look at all of these different cultural operations, these different machines. And another key thing I'd like to point out is that our Turf Academy, we kind of like to link up with the industry and our industry then comes in and they um, can demonstrate some of their machinery and our students get to network and they get to uh, create new links within the industry. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a three-way system. Some of the visits you went on this year were particularly interesting. Yeah, we were down this year. Uh, I have to thank one of our students, maybe Michael, um, if he's listening in tonight. Uh, we got to go down to Le Hinch. Uh, we got to go to the Curra. Again, we got to go there through another networking, uh, which would be Martin's Turf. Uh, we were in the Viva. We've been in Crow Park. So, yeah, we, it's again in relation to sports turf. It's not just golf courses. Yeah. It's a different range. The GA Centre of Excellence. The GA Centre. That was yeah. uh, last year. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. The students get to see a range of different sports surfaces and how they're maintained um, throughout the course. One thing that strikes me about the students that come in to do the sports turf, I think they, they're like a lot of students coming in to do a component award, they can be slightly nervous because they haven't been in college for a while. But it's interesting to see how much take up they have on other modules. So there are other modules that students of turf grass decide to pick and choose from once they've done the sports turf science and maintenance? Yeah, I would recommend that they do tree and shrub management um, because golf, uh, golf courses, trees can be, uh, can, aid, can aid in, yeah. in design and they can cause problems and how to deal with them. But they need biodiversity plans as well. Of, they all have to buy into well. that. So tree and shrub management is an essential yeah. part of that. And another one then in relation to, is in relation to, um, they would look at, uh, pesticide application as well. Yeah, because they all have to have to have the cert for spraying. In relation to suds, yeah. you need to understand the sustainable use directive as well. Yeah. Yes. Very good. So the, 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 that the facility in Ashdown has created a very strong platform for students to come and to learn. Yeah, and it's created a very strong link with the industry too. Yeah. Um, who come we in. saw some shots in the video there of uh, uh, some area yeah, shots have, of some have, events. We had a very successful yeah. industry there where uh, certain companies come in and they launched new products and the yeah. students got to see these new new innovations yeah. and new technologies um, and they actually got to operate them which was uh, which is a great benefit to the students as well 
yeah very good okay thanks for that paddy we might come back now to to delve a bit more into into those courses uh but the next uh video that i'd like the viewers to see is on our fruit and veg enterprise fruit and veg is a massively important area and has become increasingly more important in our college um, and i'm glad to see that happening and um, so our colleague james brady is going to present a short uh, video on the facilities that we have and that we use uh for our training over at ashton my name is James Brady and I'm a college technician with the Chagas College of Immunity Horticulture at National Botanic Gardens, Glasnevin. I'm based here in our Ashton campus where I'm responsible for the fruit and vegetable garden. The garden is developed and managed with focus on providing a practical learning resource for full and part-time students um, attending our QQI Level 5 Fruit and Vegetable Production Module, our Level 6 Market Gardening and Level 7 Sustainable Fruit Production Module. The garden itself is just under an acre in size and consists of a mixed orchard planted with apples, plums, pears, cherries, mulberries and medlar. There are also numerous fruit beds consisting of summer and autumn fruits, for example black currants, red currants and gooseberries. There are also 10 vegetable plots, each measuring 140 square metres, with each bed planted with various crops which are in the same family. Uh, the fruit and vegetable garden is maintained in a sustainable manner where students demonstrate best practice focusing on sustainability, integrated pest management and crop rotation. Students can enhance the knowledge learned in the classroom by carrying out practical skills where they gain hands-on experience in planning, management and development of the garden. This allows students here in Ashtown to develop a variety of practical skills such as ground preparation, plant propagation and cropping systems. This practical learning facilitates students in building their confidence to equip them with necessary skills and knowledge to enter a progressive and dynamic food industry, leading to employment with commercial growers, market gardeners and private wall gardens. Okay, so what you just saw there was a, a, a short video on our fruit and veg enterprise, which we've developed uh, in our campus in Ashtown in the last uh, three years. Um, notwithstanding that we use uh, uh, the botanic gardens quite heavily, there's a very good organic fruit and veg garden here um, that we use and students go on placement there. Um, but the, uh, the facility in Ashtown has been, has been wonderful to us in terms of being able to develop it from the ground up. Christopher, if I met, uh, turn to you on this one. Um, again, it's become extremely popular, fruit and veg, our module at level five, and then it feeds into, we'll say, our level six offering where students go on to the level six um, advanced certificate to develop their, their knowledge further and they follow the module in food production. That's an area that Paddy would be involved in as well. But what, what is the big attraction on the fruit and veg module, would you say? I think, apart from your own teaching, maybe. I, I, think, I think that's only a minor part of it. No, I think the, uh, I think the whole world is looking at food yeah. in, a, in a big, big way. And, um, and on, a, on a smaller scale, individuals are looking at food. And regardless of whether they have an allotment or a garden or a patio or a tub, they want to be able to produce their own food in some it. form or other. Yeah. And, uh, and a lot of people see that as a a work-life balance thing as well you know it's 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 a way of de-stressing yeah. it's a way of of doing something practical and useful and still horticultural yeah and, and living you know? yeah and the way it's constructed in ashtown like with all of the different beds like i mean there's like these compact beds that are all attributed to one particular family so you can see a, a continuum in terms of rotations that exist yeah. through that yeah, the, the, the site we have over there is perfect for yeah. the veg garden that we've created there. So there's a veg garden being created over time. And the great thing about that is it feeds into the student being able to, uh, to design that space. So the students over time have designed that space at fruit and veg production um, in the fruit and veg production module. Yeah. Um, and every year I get in this wonderful batch of, I have to read them all, but I get in this wonderful batch of assignments, yeah. um, usually based on something to do with our fruit and veg garden there, yeah. or the walled garden element yeah. of it that we're looking towards as well. And, yeah, um, we'd hope to build uh, some yeah, sort of a walled in, garden. In, yeah. in time. Yeah. In time yeah. and, um, and it's fantastic to see all the ideas mm. and the, the plants that are using, mm. and they, they have learned through the fruit and veg yeah. module where to place those plants, north wall, mm. south wall, and so on, yeah. and all of this. Uh, we also have rotational beds, so we have 10 beds that are divided into 10 sections and we teach rotation and yeah. it's a very easy way of teaching yeah. rotation and of course we have a fantastic pergola now there which yeah. we've got recently and yeah. we're able to grow plants and vines and yeah. so on on that so it's all working towards a, a yeah. very compact attractive 
uh, productive yeah. unit. We offer, we offer a choice between uh, fruit and veg production and our level five, that's our foundation course, between fruit and veg production and landscape construction and maintenance. And, and there's, a, there's, a, there's a nice equal divide there. There is. So there yes. is. One question that's come in here on the, on the Q&A is, uh, I'm looking at doing fruit and veg production part-time. What other modules would you recommend doing alongside it? So we might have touched on that in maybe yeah, the sports a number area, of it. Well, I'm going to pick my own one first, of course, plant propagation. Plant propagation is, sits well with it, doesn't it? Sits it sits yeah. very, very well with it yeah. because regardless, I mean, most of what we do in plant propagation is to propagate shrubs and yeah. trees, but there's no reason why we can't be propagating shrubs and trees which are fruitful, edible, useful to bees, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and biodiverse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but also with that, you could have uh, plant protection, I suppose, would be another element that would be very useful with fruit and veg too yeah. as, a, as a course. Yeah. Yes, Paddy. Yeah. Up in there, I'd also recommend that they should consider trying to do uh, horticultural mechanization. Because, Art mechanization, yeah. You know, your vegetable garden has to be, your ground has to be rotated, has to be turned over. You have to understand how to prepare a seabed and the different range of hand tools that's required. And there's yeah. two key um, skills that's in that particular module that would help you with your uh, Veg. So you can see already there yeah. that somebody has the basis of an entire course. You yeah. know, they're beginning to build up yeah. components maybe in, yeah. in each of those over a couple of years and yeah. you could build up an entire course very quickly yeah. all based around one original uh, idea. Absolutely. And, and so many people have come into the college in the last four or five years to either to do plant propagation or garden design or landscape construction and maintenance. And now they're building. Every year at graduation, we see people exiting our college who have stacked awards. Isn't that right? Like, I mean, we'd, we, there'd be people that'd be walking out the door after three years with a major award. And that's a fantastic achievement. And I'm sure there's some of them watching here this evening. And, and the clear message to people now, and, and I know we sometimes get caught up in our terminology, so make sure to go onto the Chagas website to check out exactly what's on offer. Uh, in terms of these individual awards, in terms of major awards, and in terms of uh, the qualifications that you that you that you can get from it, um, I'm just going to refer to one or two questions here. And, and the first one is: uh, in the level five online plant propagation component module, is it open for applicants now? And what is the cost? Well, the answer to that is uh, for plant propagation for the autumn. That's opening up very very soon. So that's for the autumn course. For the plant propagation that's currently for the summer, that's booked. That's, that's more or less booked. And uh, the cost of doing a module like that is 200 euros. That's what the cost of doing that is. So that's a question that has come in here and we welcome those questions. Another good question that's coming in here, what about practical work now and in the autumn? So what are we doing in relation to students' practical work? Deirdre, you were looking after our student practical work experience as part of your role this year for, for the year that was in it. Um, so you were heavily involved in placing students in practical work. So maybe just briefly outline to the viewers, what, what, what do we do in practical work as part of our courses? Yeah, so at every level uh, with all our courses, there's a huge component of, of each um, level is PLP. That's what we call placement practical or learning practic period. practical learning period. Yeah. Um, so whether you're at level five, you do, you complete your PLP at, uh, internally. So you could be doing your placement here in the botanics and you're going out and you're working with the gardeners. And then in the second That's a semester, very important part of our huge, linkage, huge isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Students in level five would do two days a week yes, here and yeah. they're out here working on the so gardens. So they're out, they're working in wonderful places yeah. like the palm house or yeah. in the nursery yeah. or out in the, the, you know, out in the general, in, just the, the gardens. Family beds, yeah. yeah, family yeah, beds. yeah, yeah. Um, so that's done in the first semester mm. at level five. And then in the second semester, then um, they have to go out on placement. So if they have to choose, um, they have to pick pick uh, an industry that they want to go to, whether it's in a glass house or landscaping or So wherever. it's their choice. It's they, their choice. They want to do yeah. one of the four main areas, the nursery or the, the, the uh, landscape. Yeah. Are the turf grass? Turf grass. They have four main streams, yeah. I suppose. Nursery. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so they, they can they, they choose. So they yeah. would come to the placement officer, which was me this year, and we would decide on where they want to go, and we pick guide the best them. placement. You guide them. We would yeah. guide them, and yeah. we put pick the best placement for them to go. Absolutely. And some of those students decide to travel, so they might travel, go abroad. So for instance, last year we had a student that went to work in the Botanic Gardens in Australia, in Perth, in Australia. So, you know, 
people, there's options there. She, um, spent, she spent a number of weeks in Perth, is right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, you know, people go to the UK and people go to America, depending on what stream you do. So currently we have a, um, some students that before COVID-19 uh, mm. came to the college, mm. they, they got over to New York and they haven't come back. But So they're still there they're and they're, still there. they're working. They're still, we hope they're still there. Uh, and they're, yeah. they're working away now. And they, they're due to come back then in, in the end of August. So what I would say is that when you do come into the college, and because placement is such a large component of every stream here, yeah. choose wisely, you know. And if you can, I'll always encourage students to travel abroad, to go off, learn new skills, uh, and hopefully bring them home. And I think it's a great foundation. Um, I know in my own case, from my own studies, mm -hmm. like I always chose the option to travel abroad, yeah. and it stood me well. So I would definitely encourage people to go yeah. abroad for placement. Yeah. And I think it's important to stress to the viewers that, you know, I mean, we everything we do now is guided by HSE guidelines, and yes. we want to stress that. Um, but come the autumn, we expect to be operating business as usual in a blended format, mm -hmm. so that students will get their theory uh, study online, but they'll get their practical study in the same way that they got it before. And notwithstanding that the PLP that we refer to, which is practical learning period, we aspire to be able to do, to do that because that's, that's a socially distanced activity mm -hmm. and we expect to do that. But again, like everything, we're guided by, mm -hmm. by the chief medical okay. officer okay. on all of these yeah. items yeah. and we, we, keep, we keep close to that, uh, to that news feed. Um, okay, just a couple of other questions that are coming in. Um, is there a research area in horticulture? That's a great question because people who know about Chagas will know that there's three strands to Chagas. There's a research area, there's a knowledge transfer area, and there's an advisory area. Um, so we, 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 there is a research area, and we mentioned this fantastic place, Ash, Ashtown, a lot, and there's a food research facility over there, but there's also a horticultural research facility that's headed up by our colleagues over there, and they're heavily involved in the glasshouse area that you were mentioning earlier, Chris. And the great thing about it is they're doing things that are beneficial to students, yeah. so mm -hmm. they might be growing a crop of strawberries for experimentation, or they might and we get to see that. And we get to see that, yeah. and the students get to work on it. Yeah. So there's a, there's a good synergy in terms of our horticultural research colleagues. Um, it would be good if if uh, if if you know we we could we could we could we could see more. Uh, of, well, we've also yeah. had a connection with the advisory yeah. uh, end of it, where the advisors come in and they give lectures on specific topics, which are uh, which you know they're excellent lectures and their knowledge is second to none. Yeah. Another good question that has come in here uh, from Anthony, uh, will there be any level seven part-time in horticulture? So we've spoken about level five, which is our foundation level in horticulture. We've spoken a bit about our level six, which is our advanced cert in horticulture, which both are one-year courses. But in this college, we also deliver a three-year level seven ordinary degree in horticulture. That is run in conjunction with our very good partners in WIT. And Yes, is the answer, Anthony. Uh, this year, we're seeing a number of people graduating with single component certs. Mm -hmm. And we had our course board meeting the other day, and we're happy to report there was at least 10 people that left the program with the single component award. And we've been pushing that for a few years now because we see the trend. The trend is that people need to stay working. Mm -hmm. This is Dublin. It's not an easy place to live and work in. Um, and to study altogether, but we have to try and tick that box. So the, the programs that we offer are tailored that you can do them in snippets. And that's what education is about, I think. I think we'll all agree on that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for Anthony there, uh, all we need to do is contact us in a bit more detail, and we'll fill him in on, on details of individual components. And we work very well with, with WIT on that. Anyone want to add anything on that now, please feel free. Well, you do see a lot of students John, that do come in, yeah. like, and I like that they really add to the classroom. So, for instance, I was teaching like plant, uh, plant protection was it last year, and we did have people that were working out in the industry in places like NAD or you know places like that, and they were able to bring a wealth of knowledge and the peer learning that goes on in the classroom between the dynamic yeah. of the component student and the full time student is fantastic. You know, so it is. That I definitely blend, encourage it. Yeah, that blend. Like we don't have classes that are full of eighteen year olds. No. no, you know, we have classes that are a blend, <laughs> eclectic bunch. <laughs> yes, they're very, they're they're eclectic, and and they they, they bring knowledge mm. in different parcels to the table. But it's a huge addition to any yeah. class, like yeah. the the you know the variety of between ages and people, yeah, uh, and and people that are working in industry that come yeah. in, and the knowledge that they bring to the full time students is you know oh, yeah. it's immense. Yeah. So yeah. you you know that's so what I would say for anybody that's thinking about coming in on part time, do 
you know, because it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to do. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going on the questions because there's quite a few coming in. Uh, question here from Joseph. Can one take part in a level six module without having completed level five? Great question. Uh, I, I might just give an answer to that. I know maybe there's an answer going online on that. But that, that's, an, that's a common enough query uh, because some people might spot something like tree and shrub management that's at level six. They might spot the sports turf science that's at level six and they say, can I do that? Now, generally the answer is you have to have done your level five before you graduate on to a level six. But for doing specific components, and I think this is an important point to make to the viewers, if you are currently working in the industry, if you're currently working in the, in the industry, say the turf, the turf grass sector, and you have greater than three years experience, yes. yeah. um, and you're, you're getting sponsored by your employer, um, and we deem you to be suitable through an interview process, we can allow you on to that component level six. Yes. And, and that's how your learners, Paddy, came on to your sports turf science that's our course learners. this year. And the last yeah. number of years yeah. as well, John. Yeah. yeah. They all are from the industry, and they've all got experience working in their own unique uh, sports circuit. This is it. I mean, but the general rule to go on to a full level six, a full level six comprises of six modules. Isn't that right? The yeah. six modules on it, sports turf science being one in, in, your, in your discipline, for example, they have to have completed the full level five. Yes. So we generally graduate people from level five to level six. Then after level six, we get some people that jump onto the degree program. Yeah. And we have, we have a very strong tradition here in, in the Chagas College of people being able to launch themselves from uh, completing level six advanced cert onto the WIT degree program. That takes four years. So that's, that's an important, my, people might get lost in the technical detail of that. And again, I would urge you to come back to us uh, and, and contact us for more detail on that. But that's generally the progression route that we have. You'll find similar progression routes within Chagas courses all over, within agriculture, within horticulture, uh, across, across the board. Um, a very current question here, I might put this to you, Chris. Um, does our courses, this is from Emma, do, does our courses take biodiversity and organic processes into account in all modules, or is that only for specific classes? So, you know, we're very much engaged in the whole area of sustainability and biodiversity, and rightly so. And I think horticulture has a massive role to play in that. And we have we have fantastic uh, product to, to give to, to the community on that. But, you, but you, we, we've yeah. recently done a, sur yeah. a, a survey of the courses that we teach uh, for a particular purpose. Um, you, you were involved in that. <clears throat> and we collected data on how many of the courses we're teaching have an element of biodiversity and so on. Sustainability. And sustainability, sustainability yeah. 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 And, uh, and I think just about every one of them has an element of sustainability in there. Certainly the ones that I teach um, would be heavily um, balanced towards sustainability and biodiversity. And then the campus at Ashtown, as well as the Botanic Gardens here in Glasnevin, which if you look around it at the moment, is full of diversity and, yeah. and, and it's full of sustainable uh, sort of areas and plants and areas that are no longer being cut as lawns and so on. It's, it's beautiful to see you see that in all of the parks. So it's, it's a big, big trend. Yeah. Um, but uh, but the, the site in Ashtown is biodiverse and yeah. becoming more biodiverse all of the time and we're working towards that all of the time and our students demand that it's not mm. that, uh, that we're necessarily doing it altruistically mm. <laughs> it's 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 a demand that's there and i think many of the staff are very much in favor of that i would agree and and, and to be to be very specific you know we have a module called biodiversity in the natural environment which is in our level five we started that this year yeah. we got a great take up from it i mean uh, the learning outcomes are just fantastic for, for for from the view of sustainability for example there's one learning outcome what is the human impact on the environment mm. And you, you delve into that and people really get to find out what is our human footprint on the environment like and what are we actually doing to this beautiful place we, we occupy. Paddy, don't come in there. Yeah, I, I just think it's another very important point when over the last number of years we bring our students on field trips, even this year, we get to see what the growers, whether it's a herb grower, whether it's a strawberry grower, or even whether it's in relation to paving, what they are doing from a sustainability point of view in relation to permeable paving, in relation to tickle bed techniques for production of herbs. So the students are getting to learn that and we're getting, we're getting to deliver that then to students in the classroom as well. So we're constantly upskilling ourselves and the students in relation to what the industry is doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
yeah, I think we've shown we're adaptable in terms of the different uh, electives that we can put on, and, and we'll continue to, to yeah. do that. But I think the industry, the stakeholders in the industry yeah. are looking towards, um, you know, biodiversity, biodiversity. and sustainability yeah. and, yeah. and food safety, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a big part of, of the industry. It is. It's and becoming a bigger part it, of the yeah. industry. And Chagas, in fairness, have driven that as well in terms of the sustainability agenda. Yeah. So we're trying to feed off that and we're trying to, to do that uh, uh, as part of, of our own courses. Um, I'm conscious of time and I'm conscious of, of the clock ticking and of the few more items I'd just like to get through, if I may. Um, this year, could somebody, this question from Mary, this year, could somebody do all level five online without ever coming to Dublin? Well, um, <laughs> yes, I, I, that's a great question. Um, I, I think like my, 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 my line on that is that we intend to offer blended learning. I think that's the key word, and it's a word that has come out there. We, we're familiar with blended learning for years, but it's more and more out there in the, in the ether. So blended learning is whereby people will log on to a, a platform like this and get learning and get interaction. Uh, but we will also, because of the facility we have in the Botanic Gardens with the OPW and in Ashtown with Chagas, we will be endeavoring to do practical work. So it's not true that you would be able to do the entire course online. Isn't that correct, folks? No, yes, I mean, yeah. we're, we're, we're going to have to get people into the grounds. But horticulture is practical, essentially, it's hands isn't on, it? John. It's, it's hands-on. Hands you got you got to roll up the sleeves and get, 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 get stuck in. So for Mary, it's not possible to, to be down the, the, down the country, but it'll be done in targeted groups. Isn't, mm. isn't, that, yes. isn't that right? Deirdre, did you want to come well, in? Well, I was just saying, for some of the modules, it might be possible oh, to yeah. do them entirely online. Something like plant science now. Plant yeah. science, which is a very theory-heavy mm. subject, very necessary subject. Yes, yeah. Those are those, those kind of, or, or even garden design. Garden like, design, you know, yeah. We'll be yeah. testing that yeah. out in a couple of weeks. But I, I, I still think, because horticulture is such a vocational you know, career, and the hands-on experience that you gain here in the college, I think you're not, you don't receive the full educational <laughs> experience yeah. by not coming to the botanic yeah. garden so indeed still, yeah. I, I think our product contains two streams all the time Completely, like our yeah. product is 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 a theory part and the science of horticulture is vital it is a science and there's a brand new language and terminology out there but the practical work is where, where all the learning happens, where all the learning happens, happens you're applying that yeah. learning outside there paddy did you want to yeah i just like to add to that is like we are trying uh, and we are doing our best in relation to so we take a subject like landscape construction and maintenance going forward we are currently looking at recording um, our, us doing the demonstrations that the student at home can actually, will not have to come in, but they can actually see it being recorded. So then when they come in, it's limited in relation to getting to practice with the machine and then being assessed on it or in relation to yeah. whether it's paving. But we're, we're looking at ways to try and reduce students coming in, but it's not possible in certain skill, in certain subjects to be able to do that. Correct. And, and this summer gives us an opportunity to experience what's been done in both garden design in an online uh, in environment and in plant propagation in an online environment and to gauge it. But this summer we'd, we'd, we'd hope to spend a lot of time developing content, mm -hmm. yeah. content that's usable in the virtual environment so that our stakeholders and our learners can, can, can benefit from that. Um, a very, there's some fantastic questions coming in here. Um, is there a, this is from Kenneth, is there a good chance of employment with only the level five horticulture qualification or is this more of an entry course to expand? Thank you in advance. Kenneth, I'm going to take that one directly myself. I'll bring you in, Paddy. You're anxious to get in there. But uh, no, my view on that has always been, and it, it, it goes across all disciplines, the higher your qualification, the better chance you have of employment. And that, that's proven with studies for years in many disciplines. I think level five on its own is fine, but it's entry grade. And I think the way careers have developed going forward, um, people need higher qualifications within any discipline and horticulture is no different. So we always encourage our people that come in here, go as far as you can, develop your potential all the way because every year students come back and say, I should have done level six or I should have done level seven because I'm in a job now and I can't get to the interview stage because I don't have that level of qualification. So I, I, I think level five is fine but you'll find yourself hemmed in a bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, what it does do for yeah. an employer. Yes. When an employer looks at, at somebody who's done a full level five, yeah. they see commitment. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, if somebody can only do level five, if that's all that they can do, it improves their ability 
to gain employment oh, ma yes. massively. Oh, it's massively. a huge, it's a yeah. huge advance. Yeah, yeah, it is. And then they probably see the benefit then yeah. in, in continuing on further. And maybe their employer will see the benefit in sending them Of sending further. them back yeah. for further development. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. I, I'd like to just point out, like uh, before uh, COVID, like in January, February, I, was, I would have personally got loads of phone calls from the sports turf landscape and food industry looking for people with a level five and even in the last number of weeks i've been similar getting uh, phone calls would i recommend any student to be any students uh, with a level five qualification that I, I need to work in my landscape business or my food business yeah. so uh, the demand is still there yeah um yeah there is i think that the demand is still there there's no doubt about it um i'll move on to another quick question um is there a time limit of doing component awards in order to get a major award so just to, to summarize that uh, for the viewers, uh, over how many years should you be doing components before you graduate with a full major award? And I would always say to people, two to three years is, is long enough to spend doing components if you're chasing a major award. So if you're chasing a major award at our level five certificate or our advanced cert level six, um, the reason is because courses change. And we're under the um, umbrella of uh, QQI, Quality and Qualifications Ireland, and they change courses every now and again. So we would always say two to three years because that keeps the momentum going, I would say. Would, would yes, you agree? agree you. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 it provides the right platform. And, for, and most of our students that are doing it through a component are achieving it in the two to three year period. They're currently doing it at the moment. Yeah. Um, very good. A question there, specific question, I'm conscious of time as well. Could you tell me what is the best route going forward to become a herb grower? Now, herb growing is a very specialized area. And I know, Paddy, that we visit a number of very specialized, highly intensive herb growers yep. in the greater Dublin area. In County Mead, that might add, they're in County Mead. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but to become a specialized herb grower, could you summarize what, what, what way should you go about that? If I was going about that, I would definitely, in level five, as an introduction course, a foundation course, as I like to say, I would definitely do the fruit and vegetable uh, production. Um, and it gives you a good foundation in relation to uh, soil health, um, in relation to pest disease, in relation, most importantly, crop rotation. If you're looking at producing a herb crop continuously in the same ground over a period of time, you don't have to produce it in the ground over the over a uh, multiple uh, period. Um, then I would look at, you know, trying to progress my education to go on to the level six to look at the follow on from the food in relation to the market gardening and try and look at my markets in relation to where I could actually uh, sell or provide my herbs onto, whether it's the hotels, yeah. whether it's got your own food um, service, yeah. food service industry yeah. or from your own base yourself yeah. or whether you're going to do the box that? scheme. Yeah. And the other great thing about yeah. it is you have hosts out there. From the point of view, as Deirdre was talking about PLP earlier, yeah. on, you've hosts out there who are specific. You've mentioned, yeah. you know, the specificness of them and, yeah. and so on, or the speciality of them, and um, who are willing to take students in and they can train in that environment and and learn to trade. Yeah, but uh, yeah, there are some fantastic visits that's done to herb herb producers, and there's a big demand for that. Well, there's a big demand for it, and, yeah. you know, and you get to go out and you get to see these places, and you get to see how they do it. And again, they're always yeah. looking for. As Chris and Deirdre pointed out, they're always looking for students and they're willing to train up students. Yeah. So we have one other question there. How much practical work and experience is in the level seven? So level seven, for the viewers, is our three-year degree done in conjunction with WIT. And there's a full semester of placement in that. It's done in uh, semester number four, which is the second half of year two. And again, you looked after some of those students, dear, they're getting the places mm -hmm. this year. Um, and uh, what happens is that they go on placement just after Christmas and second year, and a lot of them extend that out. Mm -hmm. They go right up to maybe July and August. So mm -hmm. they have seven, eight months of placement. So huge element of practical learning there, isn't that right? Yeah, completely. Yeah. I mean, again, you're looking at one, you know, one semester or sorry, one academic year coming in, uh, studying in the classroom, and then you're going out on placement for the second, sec second semester yeah. of the second <coughs> year. Uh, and like that, again, uh, we do have students this year that traveled to the States, that were traveling to the, States, that traveling true, to the yeah. UK. Um, so it's a huge, again, another it's huge part component of, what do, of level yeah, seven. Even though they're yeah. doing a degree. Yeah. So we're going to finish out uh, in, in the next couple of minutes, but just two things in terms of the student experience in the college. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the first one was uh, the activity around the Skills Fund Day, Paddy, you were central to organizing that. 
that was that was the end of the year last year. What what did that what did that mean for students? Well, uh, look through, throughout my teaching, I find that sometimes you know some students um, would be maybe socially shy, uh, and it, what I was trying to develop was a practical skills team day to get these students yeah. to interact, but to bring fun into it. Learning yeah. should be fun. Yeah. You know, and if you can bring fun into learning, you get the most out of a student. Yeah. And it's so a great what, idea. Yeah. So what we yeah. did was we organized an annual event in relation to Practical Skills Day, and we met a bit of a competition. We got uh, people from the industry who come in and sponsored the event, and they and then at the very end of the day, we actually had a barbecue to yeah. round it off. It, and it finished off the year very well, and students were geared up towards that to, to develop in their skills. We had we had a plant ID, we had treasure hunt. It was it was really all inclusive, so it was. Yeah, they got the, they, they got a great kind of didn't out know of that. what they were going to get during the day, yeah. so it was kind of a surprise for yeah. them too. So on top of all the visits that we do, and we do quite a lot of visits out to stakeholders. Deirdre, you were involved in planning a, a foreign trip in the last year. Uh, tell us a small bit about that. COVID put the kibosh on it this yeah, year, but, but this last year we year, were meant to go and visit the iconic garden. Uh, Villa Deste and Villa Lante in Italy but um, that didn't happen for very obvious reasons yeah. but last year we did however make it over to the Netherlands and like that we, we went over to some of the you know Amsterdam and uh, which is the, the horticultural Mecca and we visit, uh, visited like some of the top growers over there and um, we went down we to Belgium about 40 we, students. we went with about 40 students and yeah. um, plenty of staff and uh, you know we had a, a great time we learned an awful lot and we had great fun like you know and it was a, a definite highlight yeah. of the course and um, so it's not all about right it is all about learning right but it, it, there's plenty of fun to be had as well and if you yeah. put yourself out there and you you know you, you go on, on on these trips um and it was a definite highlight of last year uh, anyway and it's yes, unfortunate it yeah. Italy didn't happen but uh there's always we have next to wait year. and see where we're going to go next year yeah, yeah. One of the Fo- quick, yes Patty. one Sorry. quick point yeah. that is where you get on the two two occasions you get students maybe at level five get to mix with students at level six mm-hmm. and even at the degree yeah. and they get to share their experiences yeah. so there's yeah. good bonding going on so you get the, good bonding. Yeah. from the feedback right so we sent out a survey after the the trip but the feedback came was that the students loved actually just hanging out with, with the each staff other in the yeah. botanic no not yeah. really with us john <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah it was good fun <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, folks. Um, we're, we've run out of time uh, and I want to stick to the clock. Um, it's been very interesting having you on board to, to, to share this experience with us here in the college. Um, I hope you, the viewer, got uh, some of your questions answered. I know there's been a lot of questions and Karen uh, has kindly agreed to monitor those questions. We will hopefully answer those questions in due course. This presentation will be available on our website and on the Chagas YouTube channel. <clears throat> and we look forward to engaging with you again. Um, just also to say thank you to Chagas and thank you to Declan Ricardo for organizing this. Uh, there's open, open events, virtual open events happening in all our colleges across the country over the next fortnight. So check out chagas.ie for all that information. And we wish you well in, uh, in doing horticulture in the National Botanic Gardens. Thank you. <laughs>